Good evening, my fellow Carnage fans, and welcome to Friday Night Fights featuring the Legionnaires and Black Watch. Can't tell you how excited I am to be casting this, because to me, this is a battle between sort of the old guard and the new guard. Black Watch, up and coming team, been doing very well, particularly in the hiatus tournament versus the Legionnaires who have been in the league for a long time and represent a serious challenge for them. So today we are going to be starting with the bands. And first of all, we have, interestingly, from the Legionnaires, the home team, no ban. Haven't seen that so far this season, as far as I know. Of course, anybody knows differently, chime in on the chat. Feel free. And Blackwatch will be banning Quarantine. So not entirely sure about the logic behind the no ban, but I'm sure we'll see it unfold. And in terms of Q1, I did look at some stats ahead of time, and the Legionnaires have about a 50% win rate historically, and that's all time on Q1. So I think Blackwatch is looking to kind of take them out of their element on that. But we are going to be starting with Downfall. So Downfall, kind of a Legionnaire standard in a certain way, because they are known more for a deliberate, careful style. And Downfall, even though you do have to be a little bit more hustled on offense, does have a very strong bulk advantage, especially for teams who play that way. So it will be interesting to see how that plays out and how Blackwatch can adapt to it. So with that in mind, we are going to jump to a brief intermission, and then next time we come in, we will be in the action. Stay tuned. Friday Night Fights with your old friend Theta.
All right, we are in downfall. And these days, it's more likely you should call it downfall dusk because it is much darker than it used to be. But if you ask me, that just makes this map even better. Easily my favorite map in the game. And something I forgot to mention in the intro is that both teams have decided to elect to allow smokes and C4. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, maybe you don't play the game or you're brand new, right now in the current VRML rule set, that is not allowed. You are not supposed to bring C4 or smokes. Smokes have a certain blinding mechanic to them, which some people feel is overpowered, and C4s cannot be diffused like they used to be able to. You used to be able to walk up to them and knife them or shoot them from a distance if you didn't want to get too close and get blown up. Uh, but you can't do that now. The only way to get rid of a C4 is by throwing a frag at it. These teams decided, you know what? We don't care about those rules. We're going to play by our own rule set, and we're going to have smokes and C4. So that'll make things very interesting here, as crossing open spaces and downfall without smokes is very challenging. So this should provide a bit of an advantage to Marsoc, especially if they can start dumping smokes into an entrenched position because not only will that give them visual cover, but it will, in fact, blind any defenders that are nearby. Uh, I have sent the good luck, have fun signal to both captains, so we're just waiting for them to get going here. And today we have, on the Legionnaire side, we've got Mao, Eric, Kagan, Nick G, and DMT. And then on Black Watch, we've got Razor Reflex, the Sky Joker, Lando, Cash Crazy, and It's the Crow Bro. This is a very interesting match to me because uh, for those of you who don't know, there was a bit of a hiatus in the VRML while everybody sort of adapted to changes in the game and the developers made some fixes. And in that hiatus, I was scrim casting tons of scrims, particularly with brand new teams, and Blackwatch was one of the first. So it's pretty cool, I have to say, to see them in a real league match playing against a team with as much esteem as the Legionnaires, who have been around for quite a few seasons at this point. So as I said in the intro, a real test of the old guard versus the new guard. And I am eagerly anticipating the carnage that will follow here. So while we're waiting still, one thing I want to point out that I have personally been caught on a few times now just playing around this map are these towers. So these used to just be towers that you couldn't do anything in, but if you come through this doorway, you can go up and up and up, and right now the height isn't quite perfect, so you can't fully see through it, but it's still a powerful position, and I, I, it will be interesting to see, apologies for the motorcycle there, if anybody takes advantage of that. Uh, being a newer team, I would be a, uh, maybe a bit surprised if Blackwatch didn't at least try that out because these new teams seem pretty experimental. Uh, but we'll find out, like I said. And let's see, what else has changed here? So the shadows are now a bit darker, but, oh, one thing that is worth pointing out, just if you're defending, is right here on Marsoc Darkroom. This has been a perennial favorite defensive position for a long time. Because you can go inside and you look through these windows, you can see that you have just excellent visibility over a large portion of the map and you're in deep cover there. And previously, these windows were black. And unless you had a sniper rifle or you just got lucky, you were not going to take out that person in there from a distance. And now they're very well lit. So that changes the dimensions of this defense substantially. And let's see, we are on... Is it... Which objective is this? Okay, we're on helicopter bungalow, so it's not quite as relevant here. You know, the Marsoc could potentially take that position, but... Oh, here we go. Yep. Had a false start there. thought we were going. Uh, but just to finish that thought, uh, for the objectives on the dumpsters, upper and lower dumpster, that is now... I wouldn't say it's been negated. It's still a powerful position, but... It is not quite as powerful as it used to be just because there is so much more visibility into that uh, position. All right, and we are getting a real start now. Let's see where the spawns are. Okay. 
So we have, just zoom over here to the Legionnaires. And it looks like we're going to get a valley spawn area, or southwest, or excuse me, southeast. Okay, so offense pushing three through the south valley. Eric and Mal. Oh, Eric already putting shots down range. There's one move in the chapel. There's one move yeah, in the chapel. Yeah, just called out who is this. This is Cash Crazy who just moved into West Church, or West Chapel as he was calling it. Yeah, Cash very pushed up. Interesting position to take. I'd be curious to see if the Legionnaires are going to catch on to this aggressive of a push on this defense. Although he did get called out. So Nick G and DMT head up to White House, which is another position which has been nerfed to some degree because if you look through this window, it's no longer black. It is, in fact, very well lit. Did anybody see if we made it to chapel? Kagan now spider crabbing his way around the corner at Upper Dumpster. And let's just check in on the offense more on the north side here. Got Eric looking through upper red truck down towards the objective area. And a, oh, and DMT takes out Cash Crazy. Not a complete kill, though. So Cash Crazy in a surprisingly good position for callouts right now. Because they, they're going to have to really expose themselves to finish that kill. And he can just see anybody coming from the south. So this is potentially a very good thing for Blackwatch, just in the sense that they have pure visibility on this. And just in general, a very strong south slanted push here from Legionnaires. Four in the south and only one in the north. And it looks like Blackwatch has elected to give a little bit of a loose defense here. They're not terribly far off, but in particular with Cash Crazy that far off. Now, if there's penetration through the middle here, it's going to be a challenge. So Eric has made his way to lower red truck now. Uh, Lando hanging out in the lower story of the helicopter two-story building, watching for anybody who might be thinking about flanking from the north. Another interesting position there. And Nick G keeping his laser trained right on objective, seeing if he can pick up anybody. Ooh, Kagan one, takes out Sky one. Joker. Yep. Shots ringing out from Mao up in Dark Room. And Setter Hotel is now being taken over. Oh, but the Crow Bro. And he gets refragged by Kagan. So it looks like Mal was just firing for audio cover there to cover the push into Center Hotel, and that largely worked. They lost somebody, but they are now much closer to the objective. Eric takes out Lando in Helicopter 2 story. He must have heard him move in up there. Oh, fuck. oh Kagan. Sorry, I just team scared. kills Eric there, and no revive available. He is dead, down for the count. So now it is 3v1, Razor Reflex, Lone Defender, and Cash Crazy still downed in that position in the south. But I don't know how much help that's going to be. He has some visibility towards ejection area. Kagan just called for suppression onto the objective. He's up there somewhere. Although Razor Reflex's laser kept... Oh boy, Kagan with the push here. Looks like he's going for the finish. Oh, pad out on objective. And Razor Reflex is not on objective right now. He's there, but he may be too late if Kagan can cap this quickly. Yep, there it is. Wow, just excellent coordination there by the offense. Tons of quality covering fire. In particular, that last push, Kagan came around from the east side of Center Hotel and explicitly asked for gunfire onto the objective to draw attention, and that's exactly what happened. Everybody in the southwest just started shooting at objective, 
and that force racer reflex will rotate and in that confusion kagan ran up and capped so great play there by legionnaires interesting too that they did not use smoke there at all even though smoke is legal uh i don't know maybe they're just used to playing the new meta of no smokes but it seemed like that'd be an opportunity to utilize smokes rather than just gunfire but perhaps they were just making a statement that they didn't need smokes i don't know so legionnaires go up to nothing on first round of downfall and now blackwatch has a tall order because the legionnaires are in my experience quite good at downfall defense very disciplined very good at setting up crossing lines amongst each other and forcing people out into the open maybe blackwatch will start using smokes on this round as a way to counter that we will find out Yeah, I was a little, not, I wouldn't say confused, but I was a little surprised that there was such a strong push in one direction. That almost seems like the new meta now. A lot of teams I've noticed are doing that. They're doing four or even five person pushes to one side and just storming more spread out defenses because a single defender, even if he takes someone with him, is just going to get overwhelmed if he runs into the, uh, excuse me, a force that size. Okay, and now we have spawned in. Let's get this round going. Okay, we're a bit open here. Get a northeast spawn this time for Blackwatch. And Sky Joker quarterbacking for his teammates here. Not, not spawn. Let's see. Let's see. Mao finishes Mal. off Lando right off the bat. We are only 440 in right now, and Blackwatch is now down a person. Let's take a look at this defensive setup, Lando. as I imagine Blackwatch is probably going to back off a little bit now. Fairly traditional positions here. Yeah, this is... They are setting up a nice little kill box... Almost perfect symmetry looking on the map here of these positions. One directly on objective and then just forming a kill box around that objective. And it looks like there's another concentrated push going on for offense. Got Marsoc three stack here. And then in the far south, we have one. It's DeCrobro pushing by himself. Just lots of little probing lasers hitting all over both offense and defense. Nobody's taking shots right now. Yeah, Legionnaire is doing a very good job of staying concealed. I imagine they know that Mao is in Helicopter 2 story right now just because he got that kill. I believe there's return fire there as well. But other than that, I don't think they know where anybody is. I would be surprised. Sky Joker making a bit of an aggressive push here over to lower red truck. Now, one thing to keep in mind here for everybody that, again, is not fully abreast of changes that have happened since 1.8, but they've only got five minutes to work with now as opposed to the old six minutes. So it makes sense to be deliberate in certain points of the game, but you know the big challenge, especially for these newer teams, is coming up with tempo that makes sense and allows you to not just get timed out. So some shots came out there. I did not see where exactly they came from, but... Okay, so they came out from Eric, which would be in North Brothel. Yeah, that makes sense. So he has... He must have seen these defenders up at Upper Red Truck. Razor Reflex now rushing into the center. Two minutes, 15 seconds. They're getting closer to objective, but they need to start pushing the pace now a bit more. They are surrounding here with somebody in the south, but he is a long way off, and if this push starts falling apart, he's going to be in trouble. Sky Joker creeping out into the open. Checks his corner, checks Start pushing checks up. the crater building. 
and he's got his eyes locked on to Mao here, which makes sense since Mao took somebody out from that position. But he's also exposing himself quite a bit by... Uh, he's now proning through the open, which is a bit better because he won't be seen from other positions. A minute and 24 seconds left. They really need to start pushing the pace here, especially it's the Crowbro way in the southwest. Mal gets raised for reflex near the center. And Mal just called out Sky Joker. He must have heard him. So there's no way he saw him there. Yep. And Sky Joker is now in a pretty precarious position because Nick G will have eyes on him in just a moment. And it's to Crowbro still way in the south. Cash Crazy is now behind Sky Joker, so reinforce that position a little bit. But they really need to get moving now, especially it's to Crowbro. He seems to be rushing now. Smoke comes out from the south. Yeah, Mal gets Sky Joker. TMT gets to Crowbro. It's looking pretty grim here for Cash Crazy. He has 30 seconds roughly to make this happen. Oh, and Nick G just got a double team kill there. Or a single team kill. Can't tell what happened there based on the, the dots, but Cash Crazy rushing in. He does not have time for this. He is going to run out of time. Oh, and at the last second, Cash Crazy gets taken out. Yep, that is classic Legionnaire's downfall defense there. Very disciplined, excellent communication, and they just forced the other team to bleed their time away until they had nothing left, and they are experts at that. They have always been experts at that. If anybody's ever played against the Legionnaire's, that is basically the Legionnaire's special on downfall is taking up very good positions and then playing them with just iron discipline. So now we have the lower dumpster objective, which presents an interesting defensive challenge here because you can get capped on from multiple angles, especially if you, do, if you lose your south or you're not watching your south, people can run in through the back. And even if you hear the people on the north side uh, you will have to run a long way to do anything about it. In most cases, you will just get capped on if you hear somebody that late. Blackwatch had a little bit of an off offensive defense, so to speak, on the last round. Their last defensive round, we'll see. They elect to do the same thing. And then Cash Crazy, I believe it was, pushed a bit out to uh, West Church. I don't know what they would do in that regards here, but we'll find out. Hmm. So let's just go over the scores here real quick. So it looks like Legionnaires, Mao is leading with three and two, and then there's a tie on Blackwatch or Razor Reflex into Crowbro at 1 and 2. All right, we're getting into it now. Ooh, and there is a quick spawn, but Legionnaire showing their veteran status here by getting low. Oh, I what, what's right of the hotel? And I... Let's see, I don't think they know it happened. Oh, no. Based on these positions, I think they know it's quick spawn. Yeah, it's the Crowbro already in center hotel. He is about to run into Kagan and DMT here. I don't think they know he's in there. They're taking their time. Oh, they must have heard him now. Oh, it's the Crowbro with a double kill through center hotel. Nice job. And Nick G watching carefully. Ah, I gotta get my way up this window here. Nick G watching carefully. And Mal takes some shots. He. It's not sure if he got it's to Crow, bro, but Crow is still up. He did get called out, though. So 
Legionnaires now aware that Center Hotel is compromised. And they have split themselves into a straight line in that far northwest corner. Nick G taking shots onto objective. None of them land. Just stay tucked in. They have to push through me to get to you. Yeah, it's the Crow Bro telling his teammates that just stay tucked. They have to come to us, and they have to come through me specifically, which is accurate. If they want to get to that position, they are going to have to cope with Center Hotel. Uh, I mean, I guess unless they completely hook around and go through the South Valley or something. Yeah, speaking of which, it doesn't look like... Uh, I guess Razor Reflex can watch to some degree on that south, but he's not. Uh, Cash Crazy, uh, he's, he's more oriented towards White House now. Looks like that's a little bit of a weak spot for them. I don't think the Legionnaires are going to fully commit to that flank. They're just sending, who is this, Eric, that direction. They have some time. It's not a ton of time, but we're about halfway through the round. Eric now making his way closer to Marsoc Towers here. Now it looks like he might be cutting in to make more of a central attack. Let's go closer. Uh, I'm not sure he's left side, not parallel, but further back from center. Yeah, they are just. Everybody stay tight. Ooh, Mal saying that they might have a kill. So kill count is potentially diluted here. But they. Two minutes left. They have been communicating with Eric. Up in the north of right now. Okay, so more diversionary shots coming out. Eric is now up at Marsoc Rocks, and he is he is going after that weakness I was talking about. Lando firmly planted in that back door, though. So even if he runs around and gets into that back door of the objective, he is going to be in for a shock unless he can react very quickly to that position. Especially he might see Razor first, and that would give away his position. Okay, he's not watching. He does not see Razor Reflex thus far. He is rushing into the back door. Razor Reflex does not see him. Tablet out. Razor Reflex still watching. Oh boy, if Eric, if Eric gets in here and kills Lando, this could potentially be a map-ending cap. Oh, but he's not expecting this. Oh wow, yeah, went in there with tablet out, not expecting somebody to be hanging out there. And that is what happens when you play against these newer teams. They throw positions at you that you're not expecting. And Nick G gets taken out by the Crow Bro after he takes down the Sky Joker. So interesting little contrast there between the two defensive rounds because, like I said, Legionnaires using a tried and true, more traditional style defense when they were defending the other objective, and Blackwatch using a much more unorthodox approach here, having somebody just sit around the corner in that back door. Because Eric, I mean, I'm assuming he thought that he just had a cap free and clear, which is why he was crouched and uh, spider crabbing his way through with his tablet out. And, you know, why would you check that corner in most cases? I mean, if you're a veteran player, nobody hangs out in there. So it wouldn't make sense to even be concerned once you make it. Most teams defend the entrance, but they do not defend the interior. So spicy little surprise there for the Legionnaires. But it's still 3-1 legionnaires so blackwatch no doubt has a tall order to deal with this all right <clears throat> yeah interesting too it looked like you know, there was not much identification there of the spawn. I didn't catch comms, but I 
I don't know if they knew they were there because uh, they seemed a little surprised to run into those two legionnaires in Center Hotel, but it worked out. And that really put a damper on that offense, losing two right away like that when they're still five up and knowing that they lost him in this central position, which has all these angles of fire. That's really hard to cope with. And the Legionnaires, to their credit, tried their best. And against a lot of teams, that would have been a cap because Eric flanked all the way around to the South Valley, got all the way back. Spider crabbed his way past Razor Reflex, who was watching on the West Road instead of watching South, and almost had it, but just did not, and frankly could not account for Lando being in there. So again, I, I think against a more traditional style defense, uh, I guess the argument could be made that he wouldn't have got there in the first place, maybe, but in general, if that one person had not been in there, that would have been a cap, in my opinion. There's just no way they would have been able to stop that in time, especially, uh, you know, veteran cappers like Eric are just so fast. Oh, here we go. And we are starting the round now. Let's see what kind of spawn we get. See if we get a quick spawn for Blackwatch as well. Uh, nope, we are not so lucky. We are getting a Marsoc area spawn this time. Don't go from the left, Mao. Go from the right. No, if they are... Okay, so sounds like they're sending three north on offense, two south through the valley. Okay, Eric rushing way forward looking to catch somebody. This is not the Legionnaires I know. Wow, Eric Eric could potentially get a double here if he turns and looks down the valley, but he is running right past Razor Reflex and Sky Joker. Just some unfortunate timing there, because... Wow. Yeah, so Eric is now penetrated into their offense. He could... He is, ooh, he's going to have an angle on Insta Crowbro in just a moment. I think he saw him just now. It's a crow, bro. Does not realize how close to death he was right there. I'm sure. Ooh, and Kagan takes out Razor Reflex at the White House. Sky Joker knows he's there now and just waiting to see if he can find an opening there. And this is really why White House is so deadly, because once the enemy team knows there's a defender in there, you really can't ignore it. It's got coverage of that rear door. And on top of that, you just have great visuals of the entire map from there. You just can't leave those people alone. You have to go in there and do something about it. Now, it has been nerfed to some degree because the windows are not pitch black anymore, but Kagan's doing the right thing. You can just kill somebody and hang out, and you know they're going to have to push you one way or another. If you just don't peek, it's a great strategy because they know this is just not a position to ignore. Sky Joker trying to get an angle here, but Kagan playing this very smart. And... Oh, and Eric gets cash crazy. It's the Crow Bro must be aware now that there is somebody in their midst. Ooh, it's a Crowbro peeking here. Looks like there's not going to be an angle on either side. Oh, never mind. Eric gets it's to Crowbro. Down, Chapel. We still got the unknown in the northeast. Blackwatch down to two versus Legionnaire's full strength of five. This is going to be a tall and steep hill to climb with two minutes and 28 seconds. And Lando is still way in the northeast here. Let's see. And Sky Joker making his way down to the objective. Wow, this this is ballsy right here. Sky Joker. Oh, Nick G. Oh, wow. And Nick G 
was hanging out in the exact same spot that Lando was, so maybe they're taking a page from their playbook, or maybe that's just part of the new meta, I'm not sure. Surprising to see a Legionnaire there, but anyway, Legionnaires finish off Black Watch and take the map 4-1. Let's see where we're going next. And we're going to Bazaar, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Okay. It looks like we might have dropped one from Black Watch. Let's see if that gets resolved quickly here. But not surprised to see a pick like Bizarre for Black Watch as the away team because Legionnaires uh, displaying their Legionnaire ness really in full effect on the last map because they are excellent at that disciplined, deliberate play style, which is very hard to deal with, particularly if you're trying to pierce their defense. Bizarre presenting many more opportunities for close quarters battle where that sort of play style doesn't have quite the same advantage. And they just recently gave it a bit of a facelift, and I have to say, I think it looks fantastic. I personally really like the sort of slate gray aesthetic that it has now. Doesn't really change anything tactically, but just looks nice. And let's see, so Sky Joker, Cash Crazy. It looks like we lost Lando there. Let me just see if captains are saying anything. Okay, so no messages from the captains. Uh, maybe it's a sub out. I'm not 100% sure. But in the meantime, let's discuss the objective we have, which is the Far West objective. <clears throat> Teams have different names for it. I'll just call it Far West for the sake of simplicity. So interesting thing about this objective is all the different places you can cap from. So first you have this wall you can just cap right through that and then zoom over here to the opposite side of the wall and you can also cap through this little corner again you can't see the objective but you can cap from there and then of course you can also cap right on objective so you really have three different angles you have to worry about for capping which makes it a pretty spicy objective to defend particularly when there's only one person left it's one of those objectives where you don't really blame somebody for deactivating the uplink or just running out and getting shot if they're the last one up and they know that they're outnumbered just because it is so hard to deal with. Uh, similar to Kiot, where you have just so many angles to be concerned with. We're going to cut to intermission just because we do seem to still be missing a player. So stick with us. We'll be right back. are back and to start with we have a what is this southeast spawn for black watch 
Let's see what the Legos, Legionnaires, whatever you want to call them, set up for their defense. Yeah, nice little kill box. Two on each side here, plus one in the far north. And Cash Crazy and Razor Reflex already up against the eastern, or excuse me, western boundary of the marketplace. And Sky Joker gets DMT right away. Oh, I... Yeah, so that is one down on Black Watch, or excuse me, Legionnaires. It looked like he might have caught an elbow there. Which, if that was, I mean, great shot. Those are hard to spot. And there is a drone in the air. Wasn't expecting that. Let's see. I'm not going to try to track that down too hard. It can be a little distracting. I'm sure we'll see it floating over the objective momentarily. So we got a 2 3 split, maybe a 2 1 2, depending on how you want to define that. Eclipse already moving up close to Nick G. That might be why they're using the drone. It would not surprise me because I don't. I don't think anybody's controlling it right now. I think they just popped it there to create audio cover, which is a good strategy. Excuse me, especially when there's potential for close quarters. You don't want anybody hearing you coming. Cash Crazy, Nick G about to meet each other, I think. Yeah, Nick G just pulled out his tablet. I imagine to check if that sound was friendly or not. Oh, but he does not peek. Interesting. Maybe he didn't hear him. Oh, Eclipse gets Mal. Sky Joker takes him out first. Razor Reflex gets Pagan. Oh, Eclipse is capping. He is on objective. Oh, and he changes his mind. I think he was worried about getting shot there. Dang, that was close. Okay, Cash Crazy now rushing in. He just gets shot at, but he has Tablet out. He may be able to get this if he's fast enough. Ooh, not quite. Two cap attempts there. I got not now. the right timing. Very close, though. So now it's just 2v2, Nick G and Eric versus Razor Reflex and Insta Crow Bro. The smoke is expending itself right next to Objective, creating some audio and visual cover there for Insta Crow Bro, I believe. The drone just drops dead due to lack of battery. And Nick G gets spotted by It's the Crow Bro. Now it's a 2v1. They have the potential here to envelop Eric, keep him busy. Ooh, but Eric gets. And, uh, and that's the end of it. Let's try to keep that clean, guys. Um, so Blackwatch goes up 1 0. That was an excellent attack. Gotta say, it was good work. Nice little envelopment there, particularly at the end. I do think that first pick at the very beginning was critical. Whenever you lose somebody that fast, it's a big deal. It creates openings, particularly on defense. And then the drone, I don't know how much of an impact that had, but I, have just as a player, have been in situations where it's very distracting. You can't hear footsteps, and it allows an advance to show up pretty quick. I think that's what happened there, because they placed the drone right above the objective area kind of leaning more towards the across the street area and i don't think those people that were across the street heard the people that were coming up on them until it was too late now it's all up to legionnaires to respond here was pretty close to a cap uh, i think eclipse might have been able to get it but he decided against it decided to try to defend himself instead which i don't blame him for it's generally a smarter move. You don't want to lose because you were trying to cap and just couldn't make it happen fast enough or you ignored footsteps coming right on you, something like that. You know, try to get the kills and just try to get the win. You don't necessarily have to get the cap, and it looks like he had that calculus going in his head at the time. Okay, here we go. Next round.
All right, we got a tank spawn for Marsock this time. Can you throw it like you want in the courtyard? You want to rush the up? Yeah, sure. All right, go. Okay, we've got two M249s pushing one way, and then riflemen all pushing the other. I think there's one specialist. Yeah, Nick G, specialist there. Put it like right in here. Okay, they are. Wow, they are just pushing as a unit right now. No hesitation. Yeah, one is in the top floor of the bazaar. Top floor of the bazaar. Let's get some defense real quick. Moving up. Oh, there's action going on in that eastern courtyard here. Clips in Kiat right now, causing some distractions, but we'll see. Maybe Legionnaires. I've seen teams notice that and then just push on anyway. Legionnaires may elect to do that because if they can get enough people into the objective area, that person is not a threat. Eric takes out Sky Joker on the objective. Okay, now we have is this we've got a full squad of legionnaires still up black watch down one and they have three right across the street from the objective and they're getting enveloped in the south now lmg fire raining down from mal in the south smoke coming out although it looks like that might have blinded the legionnaires accidentally Frag also comes out. Eric on objective right now. Ooh. Oh, Eric just, wow, teleported there for a moment. Tablet out on objective. It's a crow bro not checking. Oh, boy, this could be a cap. Oh, if he checks, if he checks, he's got it. Oh. Eric's still capping here. Nobody checking that corner. And he does get that cap in. Ooh, that is unfortunate. They had people all around him, but nobody checking that corner. And Legionnaires get a cap on a second map as well. So Legionnaires go up 2-1. Nice attack there. They really put that attack in their face and enveloped from both sides. Three through the middle and two from the south and just started dumping LMG rounds onto the objective from the south, which gave them all the cover they needed, plus some smokes on the opposite side, which led to the cap there. So they pushed through that west, <clears throat> excuse me, west market area and then got into that little corner, unbeknownst to It's to Crow Bro. And It's to Crow Bro, just unfortunate timing there because he was checking at the right moment, but right as he did that, uh, he got shot by a legionnaire who was watching over the capper eric was completely defenseless there so just tough luck on that situation unfortunately all right so while we wait let's just review the scores here uh let's see so eric leading the way for legionnaires the one cap four kills and one death and for black watch eclipse leading three and two so this game is not over by any stretch. 1-2 is not something that you should view as fatal. Blackwatch also has the opportunity to cap here. So they could potentially go in the lead if they get in. We are changing objectives. Let me get over here. So we are now in the East Market objective. Ooh, it looks like we got the quick spawn, as they call it for this one. Gives the offense the opportunity to push through the middle. Get on objective pretty fast. Looks like another 3-2 split from the offense. And let's see the Legionnaire's defensive pattern here. Sucrobro putting rounds on the objective. Shots being traded here left and right. Eclipse and Sky Joker are right on objective already. Wow. They are not wasting time. DMT up in that little staircase area. I don't know if he heard them or not. Okay, Kagan now rotating around to check the objective. It was the right move here. 
Eclipse and Sky Joker are right there. Eclipse takes out DMT on an aggressive corner peek. Oh boy, there is so much going on near the objective right now. Oh, Eclipse and Sky Joker on objective. Nobody is directly on it. Sky Joker tablet out. And wow, what a fast cap. That was incredible. <clears throat> they were just on it without hesitation there. That was something to watch. Uh, Sky Joker built a little bit of a reputation in the scrim cast I was doing and other casters were doing as well for fast capping. And he just highlighted that skill in a real live league match. I don't know how fast that was, but it was fast. He was there and he was capping immediately. So turning the tables on Legionnaires. Blackwatch now in a position to potentially win this map because they're playing defense now. Legionnaires have to answer back with a strong offensive showing or they are going to a tiebreaker. I just don't think Legionnaires were expecting that fast of a push. Once again, I think just a divergence in styles between these new teams and these more experienced teams. And it is hard to adapt to. These newer teams are willing to take all kinds of risks. They're willing to do things that you're not used to. And it can be a little unsettling if you're not adapted to those patterns. Yeah, I think it was Mark Twain who said that it's not the experienced best swordsman in the world that the other top 10 swordsmen have to worry about. It's the amateur swordsman because he is going to do something that none of those guys expect and then take them out. Of course, that is paraphrasing, but that is the general idea is that people who are newer to the game do not see it the same way that you do and they will not do the same things that you and your fellow veterans do. And sometimes that's bad for the new players because there are certain established practices that make sense that should be followed, but there's also an opening when new people show up to a scene for brand new strategies, brand new tactics to show up that the experienced teams just aren't ready for because they just got too entrenched in their ways and they cannot cope with somebody who shows up and is not thinking that same way. And this is a fairly, uh, I would say, dicey objective to defend We'll see, maybe Legionnaires can show up and get another cap on this. But Blackwatch still in an interesting position here. They were down, now they're up. And if they play a little more conservatively than I think they have been for the rest of the match, they should be able to take this. But we'll see, especially there's smokes involved. Legionnaires might just start dumping utility on, make their lives difficult. Okay. And this time we have a southwest spawn. So Legionnaires do not really have the fast rush option for this round, which I suspect they're fine with. That's not really their play style anyway. It looks left. like, let's see, what kind of split are we getting here? So, looks like, again, maybe a 3-2. Yeah, we've got three up the middle, two going south. And Blackwatch playing fairly conservatively here. Nothing terribly unusual about any of these positions so far. Sky Joker kind of floating around the courtyard. I suspect he will settle into a position shortly. Yeah, he's hanging out right next to that north doorway now. So it's to Crow Bro watching carefully on that tank crossing. Nick G and Mal are making their way there, but they are not quite there yet. Hmm, so Legionnaires seem to have diverged a little bit in terms of their pattern. Shots ringing out. I'm not sure exactly what those are about. I think we're getting a little more audio cover here again. Ooh, Nick G and DeCrobro trade.
four v four now. So let's see. That was looking in the far eastern corner here. Oh yes, he was looking through the doorway at the tank cross. So a little bit of an opening here in the east. Blackwatch does have a defender in Cash Crazy, but he is not watching over there specifically. And they don't have anybody in blue room. So if Mal pushes through here, not that he has any way of knowing this, but he would be in a pretty good position to start picking them apart. Eric and Eclipse right around the corner from each other here. I don't know if they've hurt each other yet. Eclipse's body doing some interesting things, practicing his yoga while on defense. Yeah, this is a precarious spot. I'm a little surprised we're not seeing any utility being dumped here. I mean, smokes are allowed right now. <clears throat> this would probably be a good time to start using them. And Frag comes out near objective, but does not find any purchase. Yeah, Eric just seems to be determined to watch this line. I think what they're expecting here is a defensive push, which, to be fair, is not a terribly bad expectation, especially with newer teams. They tend to get a little more impatient. But Blackwatch showing iron discipline here, maintaining their spots. Although, as I say that, Sky Joker starts creeping out. He's about to run into Eric right now. Ooh, just barely gets missed by Kagan. Sky Joker and Kagan trade, but Sky Joker is still resible. Cash Crazy gets Mal. Legionnaire's down to just one with DMT, and he is creeping to objective. Tablet out. Oh no, they're not checking that corner. Oh, looks like. Oh. They are not checking right there. DMT can cap in that corner. And if they don't check that, yeah, that looks like that's going to be a cap. Yep, he is taking his time on this cap, but I think this is coming out. There it is. <laughs> Oof. So close. Blackwatch almost had that, but just did not check that one critical corner. Reminds me a lot of a match, I think it was season 8 or 7, I don't remember, from the playoffs, where uh, G-Men and Globochem were on that very same objective. And Zach Fontaine crept through that hallway and knifed somebody on Globochem. And nobody obviously heard that because it was a knife kill. And he capped from there because they were not watching that position. So that is just one area you cannot neglect on defense. Uh, and something I always say, I've said it many times in my cast and my tutorials, it's always better to die than to get capped on. So if you have any suspicion whatsoever, especially if you've got that many people up, just push the corner and see what happens because you cannot afford to just let that sit there as that just highlighted. So anyway, Legionnaires go up four on that map and they now take the match. Very, very close, well contested map there. And now we are going to Subway. While we lay, <clears throat> excuse me, load in, I'm going to take a sip of my Thetarade here. Oh, delicious. So, which objective are we working with here? Uh, boy, I just ran right into that. Uh, let's go downstairs to the basement objective. This is one which I think we will see some utility usage. I hope, because that is kind of the normal approach here. It's very hard to come down these stairs leading up to the objective without any smokes or at least throwing flashes. 
A uh, little surprised we haven't seen much utility. I mean, we've seen smokes a couple of times, I think. Maybe two, three times so far. Seen some frags and seen a couple flashes, but considering C4 and flash are both allowed, or excuse me, C4 and smoke are both allowed, really have not been seeing it. Uh, maybe it's just something about the meta that has changed fundamentally with this ban, but just got to say, I'm surprised. I thought for sure I'd be seeing more utility out of both teams. Uh, this one, excellent opportunities for C4, though, particularly through the tunnel. And if anybody has gotten acclimated to playing without C4, they're going to be in for a rough surprise if a defender decides to place one in there. There's all kinds of nice little dark spots you can place a C4. It's very hard to see. Or you can pull the Wookiee special and put it above one of the entrances of the stairs leading into the objective. As Wookiee famously took out, I believe it was four in one go with C4 in a match that was casted a few seasons ago. <clears throat> and even though Subway is one of my favorite maps, I would say this is maybe my least favorite objective, although middle platform, strong contender there as well, just because it is... As at least as an offensive player, it's very hard to penetrate. As a defensive player, it's great because you can hang out on the tracks. You can just sort of watch, and people start smoking. They start flashing as they sort of have to to get down there. You can really work into them. You start dumping fire, especially if you're an LMG player like me, into the smoke and catch a few people. It takes a lot of intelligence and good coordination and timing on offense to take this objective. It's not impossible, obviously, but... It's very hard. So Legionnaires will get a first crack at that. Yep, and both teams really taking their time to strategize between rounds, which is fine. Some teams just have that style. They want to get on that board and draw some doodles. Okay, we are getting into it now, as I say that. Let's get this going. All right. Ooh, it sounds like they're going to plant a flashlight, which is a new strategy we're seeing out of many of these uh, post 1.8 teams posting a flashlight on a box or something. It's a pretty strong strategy because you can't do anything to it aside from pick it up. You can't grenade. Oh. No, we didn't. That was weird. You just oh, fell. thought there was a drop there. I guess not. Uh, but you can't really do anything about the flashlight other than pick it up. You can't throw a grenade on it to blow it out. Oh, okay. C4 on these barrels. And Kagan and DMT are about to confront that. We'll see if they remembered that C4 is enabled or if they're going to check. I think especially for a veteran team, they're probably conditioned to just check. Oh, here we go. It runs right past it. Kagan is on it as well. Oh, boy. If it gets blown right now, this is going to be ugly for Legionnaires. Wait, wait. Throw it outside. Oh. Throw it outside. Throw it outside. Throw it outside. That is brutal. So, potential three kill there for Sky Joker, but did not pull the trigger. Not sure what happened there. But anyway, three Legionnaires push through the tunnel. And Nick G also on South Stairs, right around the corner from Razor Reflex, but not needed. All right, I'm on you. I'm on you. Now it's down to a 3 4. Cash crazy. Oh, wow. It's the Crowbro way off objective. Uh, if Cash crazy and Lando get compromised here, it's the Crowbro will get capped on. Pretty much a guarantee. Smoke on objective. No, oh, no, it's the Crowbo. About to run into Nick G. He gets Nick G. But they heard it. Yeah, there it is. Nice. So, Legionnaires is yeah, well, using smoke to get there. Good catch. Good catch. And takes the first round. 
Just unfortunate timing there for Sky Joker in the tunnel. I know I was waiting with bated breath for that C4 to get blown up. Uh, I'm, I don't know if he, he didn't hear him or what happened there, but that would have completely dismantled that attack. So it uh, doesn't always work out. You know, maybe he didn't hear him. Maybe he dropped the detonator. Who knows? It happens. Ugh. Anyway, Blackwatch will now have the opportunity to get a clap back, as the kids say. Before we do that, I'm going to take another sip of my Theta Raid because my throat is now not doing me any favors. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to the next round. Needed that little break for my vocal cords there. Thank you for your patience. Let's see. Uh, looks like we're getting... Uh, yeah, Mao has C4 in hand right now. Let's see where he places that. Looks like he's going for the Wookiee special here. Oh, that is a devious little placement there. And two Legionnaires rushing into the tunnels. They're feeling a bit spicy now that they have the match. TMT gets a crow bro. Kagan about to run into three right here. And that ends with a trade, but Lando gets revived. So Blackwatch down two, Legionnaires down one. DMT getting very aggressive. Uh, he's about to have a rear flank if they don't... Oh, but the Sky Joker One catches dead. him out before the flank can be executed. Now 3v3. All three remaining members of Blackwatch in the tunnels. Let's see, so let's, let's got one person up top next to one of these fizzy kook machines. Nick G. Hmm. This may end up not being so great. I mean, it worked out last time for not getting capped on. I think it's to Crowbro was up there for Blackwatch, but three-person push through the tunnels could overpower this objective position if Nick G does not run fast enough, this could end in a cap if they're not careful. Uh, flashes on the tunnel entrance. Cash Crazy holding a shield for his friends here. And Mao and Eric now aware from that flash that there are people coming through the tunnel. Two... Oh, I didn't realize this. There are two shields now. Nick G creeping down from that south stairwell, though. Got him. He's going to have a very strong angle on them. If they continue. And Nick G picks one off and then retreats. Oh, and they must be blind because that flashbang landed right at Mando's feet. Yeah, I think that is blind firing. 
So they have stopped that attack in its tracks. A little surprised Nick G did not push there, but didn't want to take that risk, I imagine, in case his flash missed. Eric takes out Sky Joker. All up to Lando now, and Eric takes him out as well. And Legionnaire is commenting on the shield count there. It is pretty unusual to see two shields being used. Uh, it does happen sometimes, but usually it's one. <clears throat> So, fun fact about Blackwatch, because they're a new team and they enter during a hiatus, uh, in case you're not aware, every new team has to play through three matches to get scored their MMR, and this will be the match that provides them with MMR, so it's a bit of a test for them. And that is really kind of, you know, in some sense, uh, initiation by fire getting into the league is getting past that hurdle where you're now going to be rated on all of your games. So, welcome to the league, Blackwatch. <clears throat> I've been doing pretty well so far. Uh, they're up against a veteran team that has multiple seasons under their belt, so nothing to be ashamed about here. They've played a hell of a game. In fact, they almost took that last map, just came down to one play, didn't work out their way. So, hopefully they've got their chins up. They seem to still have their morale, which you love to see. And the Chinatown objective is now the objective in question here. And we got a quick spawn pushing in from the south. Kagan, DMT, and Mao. They are just bum-rushing the south. And Eric and Nick G coming through the horseshoe. Five-person push through the south side. This is going to get spicy real quick. There's no doubt they didn't. They heard that. Skyjoker peeks and gets Eric. Does not finish him. Kagan pushes hard there. Gets Skyjoker. Get ready, guys. They're coming to your right. Kill up, kill up, kill up. Ooh, there's a flashlight on the ground leading up to the objective, but they just placed a smoke. Doesn't appear to be blocking it. Now we're seeing more utility. Lando gets Mal. So. 4v2 right now. There is all kinds of chaos going on near the objective. Legionnaire is rotating to the south approach. Eric has been revived and he's back up. Nick G takes out its to Crowbro south side. All up to Lando now. Lando elects to push the corner. Your time to cap, bro. He's about to get double teamed here if he hangs out in that position. Legionnaire has just called for a cap. Oof. Very close C4 there. Ooh, Lando. Ah, tried rushing that corner, but was a little too out in the open. The Legionnaires go up 3-0 Subway. Now, I don't have any way of being in the heads of any of these players, but I get the feeling that Legionnaires are pushing the envelope a little bit here just because they have taken the first two maps, and this is technically their match now and a lot of teams they kind of go into let's have fun mode and they will do things they wouldn't normally do if the game was on the line they don't play as quite as conservatively uh, i would say that is what happened in that last round because we had a full five person push through the south uh, again maybe this is just the changing meta maybe this is legionnaires trying out a new play style seriously but just not the legionnaires play style that i have observed over the seasons but Overwhelming force worked in their favor that time.
And we're back. Getting an identical spawn this time for Marsoc. Though they do not appear to be concentrating the way that Legionnaires did. Uh, oh, yeah. round reset triggered. How do you? That's bad. I don't even know. Oh. Yeah, Blackwatch threw out a flashbang there. I don't know if the Legionnaires heard it. Probably not, since they were the ones that reset. Just got to be careful about that. If there's a reset, you will come back to the same spawn point. So if you get a reset and then you fire your gun, you throw a utility, something like that, there is the potential that the defense will hear you. So my personal preference is to just stab all my teammates because I won't get punished for it. So that's your Theta pro tip of the night. If there's a reset on the other team. Don't shoot your guns in the air to kill your teammates. Just run around and shank them. I promise you'll be fine. Your KDR will be intact by the end of that. And they won't know where you spawn. So, great deal there. <clears throat> Let's see. Ooh, there was a drop. That must have been what caused the reset there. Give them a... I think we will just give this an intermission. Last time we were sitting for a minute. So, uh, we will cut out for just a moment until they come back. And, and we'll be back to Friday Night Fights.
We are back. There was a sub here on both sides. Mr. Sirius came in for the Legionnaires, and Eclipse came in for Blackwatch. In case you forgot, there was a quick spawn here. Uh, people potentially rushing up through the south, it looks like. Yep, we're going to get three pushing up the south stairwell. And then two are going to go north. Defenders not wasting any time. Kagan with two. And there's a shield there preventing that third kill. Hey, we got two pushing south. I took out both my guys. Cash Crazy all on his lonesome facing off against two riflemen, potentially three if Mal comes in. And flashed. No, this is, yeah, there we go. So Blackwatch with just over 30 seconds in the round, down to two. Legionnaire still at full strength. Sky Joker and Lando now making their way through the horseshoe. It's another situation where they just have a Really tall, steep hill to climb. If they can pull this off, it will be something majestic, but the odds are against them right now. And Nick G calling out audio cues from the horseshoe. Mao is running a big flank. Oh, he is about to come up behind them. Mal gets Sky Joker, Lando all by himself now, surrounded by Legionnaires. Yeah, he just got called out again by Nick G. And that'll do it. The Legionnaires wrap up a strong win against Black Watch. With four up on that final defense. So, again, uh, I just want to say, for the record, Blackwatch, new team going up against a very good veteran team in Legionnaires. And almost took a map off of them, which is impressive for such a new squad. So, nothing to be ashamed of on Blackwatch's side. And so much to learn from. And, you know, as a casted match, that's one of the major benefits of running in a casted match is that you can see what was going on. You can look at the mistakes you made, the good choices you made. You could practice around those. Uh, I would wager, for example, that Blackwatch will never let that corner go unwatched on Bazaar ever again. I had a similar experience in a game, actually against Legionnaires, now that I think about it, where I was across the street on that exact objective and did not push to get killed or to kill the capper and got capped on in the very first round never let that happen again because it was casted you know you watch that footage over and over and over again like i do then you will make sure those mistakes do not happen so in many ways this game will make Blackwatch better legionnaires as well i'm sure they will have plenty to review but the veterans of legionnaires take this all three maps against Blackwatch. And, and also just want to point out that Phantoms and Bravo 6 will be on venues tomorrow. And that is really an interesting experience for any of you out there with a quest. It's just a sort of like a big screen experience if you're interested in that. So highly recommend you check that out. That is the featured venues match of the week. There will be one a week from this point forward, so don't miss that if you can make it. Anyway, I have had enough sips of Theta Raid and seen enough spice for tonight, so I'm going to call it. But this is Theta, and I have had the man in the van, Nightfire, running in the background as well. want to give him credit for that. So thank you, Nightfire. Anyway, enjoy your Friday night, everybody, and I will see you on the flip side.